This is going to be part D, question number one, I believe. So please, guys, give a like and a subscribe. Let's keep the channel growing. I do have a lot more resources coming for BTEC Level 3 stuff, both for IT and for engineering. So this one says, Miguel owns a company that produces software for primary school children. He works in an office with other programmers to do this. They use PCs in the office, and Miguel uses a laptop when visiting schools to demonstrate the software to the children. Each device has a graphical user interface, a GUI. These are things you should know, by the way. So a GUI is a graphical user interface. That's this stuff you see on screen. So typically it's WIMP, W-I-M-P. So that's Windows, Icons, Menus, and Pointers, right? So that's what that means. Windows, obviously, this is our window here. Icons, uh, that's the stuff you see on screen here. So that means paste, uh, menus. You click on this menu and it gives you other things that drop down afterwards and a pointer, my mouse on screen, an optional command line interface. So command line, so see if I go CMD, this is my command line, right? So command line interface, uh, it's a lot better for programmers and really experienced people. It works a lot faster, it uses a lot less resources compared to, let's say, the GUI. The GUI uses a lot more resources, so a lot more processing power, a lot more RAM, a lot more hard drive space or SSD storage, let's say. But it is a lot easier to use for the average person. The average person won't know what to come in here and do. I genuinely don't remember half the commands for this because I don't use it very much. Next, we have a single user multitasking operating system. So when you think of operating systems, a single user multitasking means your mobile phone, your laptop. Only I can log in and use this laptop at any one time. Not, uh, no two people can log into the same computer at the same time and use it at the same time. Just like with your phone. You might have different user accounts, but only one person can log in at any one time. Hence the name single user. Multitasking. Even though I only have Word... Is this Word? Yeah. Even though I only have Word open at once. I'm sorry. Um, on my screen right now. If I go down here to my clock, for example... Um, I've got the English thing there. I've got my microphone working. When I click on this, I've got my screen recorder working. I've got my antivirus. I've got my NVIDIA drivers. I've got my memory stick plugged in. I've got my Wi-Fi here. I've got my battery being checked here. All of this stuff is working in the background. So because of that, the computer is known or is said to be multitasking, doing multiple tasks at the same time. Next, we have a hard disk drive. Now I'm going to just try and explain as much of this as I can because I won't have time to make as many videos. A hard disk drive, uh, typically older technology. The alternative to this, let me just, I might as well say it here. The alternative to this is SSD. So we have hard drive, we have SSD. Hard drives have mechanical components, so they have stuff inside that actually spin and move for you to get and store your data. They are typically older, typically cheaper per gigabyte. Uh, you typically get more storage essentially for less money with a hard drive. SSDs are newer, newer technology. It uses flash memory, so 3D NAND flash. So memory chips or memory cards stacked up on, on, on top of each other, essentially. That's how SSDs typically work. No moving parts. They should be more durable because they have no moving parts. So even when you bump it, because it has no moving parts, things won't shift on the inside. They should be low power as well because it has no moving parts. Uh, much, 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 much faster. In some cases, in which I've actually tested, five to ten times faster transfer speeds and in some cases more when i attach an ssd to my laptop to transfer videos i get 500 megabyte transfer per second whereas if i do a normal hard drive i maybe get 100 okay so a hard disk drive each programmer stores the designs on the internal hard disk drive on their pc the data stored on their pcs can be at risk even when not connected to the internet Explain two threats to data that can arise when a PC is not connected to the internet. So I know that was a bit long-winded, but essentially this is what we're answering here. Explain two threats to data that can arise when a PC is not connected to the internet. Okay, so here we have the first one says computer theft because someone could break into the office and walk away with the PC. Okay, that seems a bit weird to me, but let's keep reading and see if we can break this down. Malicious damage by someone deleting or editing malicious data on purpose introducing viruses malware via external devices okay these this first one i don't really agree with so a uh, computer theft could happen whether you're connected to the internet or not i guess what they're trying to say is that if this does happen and you're not connected to the internet 
maybe you didn't have a backup because you weren't connected to the internet. Whereas if you are connected to the internet, it is highly suggested, recommended, you're told to back everything up. So if you are connected to the internet, someone comes into an office and steals one single PC, at least you have everything backed up so you can continue working to continue to make money to eventually pay off that, that um, theft, right? Malicious damage by someone deleting or editing malicious data on purpose. That could always happen again with or without the internet. But again, I think what they're trying to say here is if you are not connected to the internet, you're not backing up to an external source like a cloud storage service. Introducing viruses and malware via external device. Um, again, if your antivirus software is not up to date and someone plugs in a memory stick, then that virus is going to just do whatever it needs to do because there's no update. Whereas if you are connected to the internet, you will get those periodic updates with your antivirus and you'll be able to most likely fight off whatever virus or malware they've um, introduced using an external memory stick or a hard drive. Next, we have accidental damage. Employee could spill, drink, and ruin the hard drive. Power surge leading to laptop crashing, overwriting or deleting files. I guess this is, again, going back to stuff not being backed up. This can happen with or without you connect, being connected to the internet. Uh, hardware system failure damage, so hard drive could encounter problems and employees may not be able to access the data. Again, back to backup. Natural disaster uh, caused by flood, again, back to backup. Accept data loss once only. Okay, I don't really agree with these answers because when I go, let's go back to the question. The question says, explain two threats to data that can arise when a PC is not connected to the internet. I... Uh, I'm going to give my version of what I think would be better answers. Now, if you want to use the examiner's answers, that's perfectly fine. I think one thing that could happen is, oh, I don't know what happened there. So the data could be corrupted, for example. I spelled that wrong. Data could be corrupted, right? I spelled it wrong again. <laughs> uh, because you're not connected to the internet, whatever bugs there are in your system or your operating system or your programs, you won't get any updates. When you don't get updates, your files or your data could become corrupted because that bug is still there, that bug is still present. If your files do get corrupted, you're most likely going to lose everything. So that's one there. Another one is you have no backup. When you're not connected to the internet, well, no cloud backup, let's say. No cloud or stroke network backup. Um, I showed you in previous videos how to attach... Um, a backup server to a switch and a switch to a PC and then you can back your files up that way. If you have no internet access, you won't specifically you won't have any cloud backup. So if someone were to come into the office and steal the PC, the PC gets damaged, there's a flood, there's a fire, whatever happens to that PC where you don't actually have access to those files anymore, because you're not connected to the internet, you don't have any backups. Because you don't have any backups, you most likely in some cases have to start from scratch, which in a business is the worst case scenario. You lose all your customer details. You have to try and call all the customers again by, by knowing their details in some way, which is, which, which is crazy, right? So these are some of the things that I think are important. They mentioned in the answer that uh, you could have your data malware so anti-malware software right i i agree with that one to some extent and again it's along the lines of because your antivirus is not up to date specifically your antivirus in this case when i said corrupted here this is the operating system specifically not getting the bug fixes it needs the other one is the um anti malware software not getting the update it needs so if someone comes in and plugs in a memory stick or a hard drive and there's a malware or virus on there it gets transferred to the pc whatever antivirus you have would most likely be outdated within days or weeks. And if it's outdated within days or weeks, and this is a brand new virus or malware that comes onto your system, your PC will not be able to fight it. And because it's not able to fight it, your system gets infected and you lose files. Your files get corrupted, they get deleted, they get moved, they get changed. The, you could have a ransomware attack where the thing pops up on your screen saying you won't be able to access your files until you transfer money to this account. So there are quite a few things that could happen. But I really don't agree with the answers that they gave. But please, I've given both. So you guys decide what's best when you read and see a scenario. Look at the scenario. Don't simply use my answers and think these, this, this must work for every single question of this type. You have to read the scenario, break it down, and then be able to answer it. Now for part two, Miguel is considering moving to a cloud storage system. One benefit of this would be to reduce the threats when storing data to their hard drives or hard disk drives, discuss how moving to a cloud storage system would impact Miguel and the other programmers. Now a discussion again, yeah, that's the only part, 
A discussion again is a back and forth, the good and the bad, of moving to a cloud storage system, how it would impact the actual programmers or Miguel and the programmers. So what they've done here, they've separated positive impacts and down here we have negative impacts. So let me go through positive first. The data would be held in a central storage area accessible by all of the computers or users. Yes, very true. Normally on a cloud storage system, you can create a folder if you are the admin person, the person who controls everything and you can share that folder with other people. They can view files and they might be able to upload files, download files and edit files as well may be able to access or share each other's files or designs to offer advice and help to each other. Yes, very true. I can share this Word document now with someone else. And whilst I'm typing in here, I might be typing something and I might make a mistake. Oh, where am I typing? And I might make a mistake somewhere, right? That person can come in and highlight this straight away, leave a comment and say, oh, you made a mistake here. Maybe you should recheck this section. So that's definitely true. Next, we have access their own files from different devices if needed. Again, this is one of the main benefits of cloud storage. They can access the files from anywhere they are. So whether they're at home, at work, on the train, in a different country, they can access the files. Synchronize across all devices being used when updates are made. So I am at work now, for example, and I update. This is my design, my wonderful design, right? I'm at work now. I update it. By the time I get home and log into my PC, it, it automatically syncs and downloads to my laptop as soon as I turn it on when I get home. Synchronizes, oh no, I've done that one. Beneficial to Miguel as he visits clients, uses laptop and PC. Now, this is true. Because he's using cloud storage, I think I've done a question like this before. Be, um, because he's using cloud storage, he doesn't need to walk around with a memory stick or a hard drive or always be emailing himself the most recent one. The, recent, the most recent one is going to be the one that's on the cloud system because everyone's been able to access that one. So he's always going to have access to the most recent one once he has an internet connection. Uh, maybe able to introduce flexibility of working from home remotely for all programmers. Very, very, very true. In lockdown, again, we were all working from home. Many IT people do this currently, where typically you have maybe three days at home and two days in the office or, or, or four days at home and one day in the office. This is already a massive thing. Can access files in the event of a hard drive failure. If, if their hard drive breaks, it is so unimportant. They might be like, oh no, I have to buy a new hard drive for, I don't know, 50 pounds, 100 pounds and reinstall the software. That's it because everything they need to work from is backed up in a cloud storage. All they have to do is download that file or get a new hard drive, get a new laptop and continue working. That's it. The business would benefit as productivity increases when uh, with file sharing. So if I can share my files easily, I can increase productivity. I don't need to edit my section, then email it to person B, person B edits their section, email it to person C, and so on and so forth. If we were all briefed at the same time, and I know, okay, my part A is going to be me writing an introduction. Part B is going to be, I don't know, the abstract. Part C is going to be the methodology. Part D is going to be something else. We can all be working on our different sections at the same time, and if we can all finish at the same time, that's us being much more productive than part B person sitting and waiting for me to finish part A to then know what they need to do. Maybe able to, maybe able to allow some working from home leading to a reduce uh, a reduction in office overheads. What that means is uh, if you're working from home, the company has to pay less electric, less water, less gas, less IT person um, at work. Um, potentially less travel because some companies pay for travel as well. You're working from home, that those overheads are going to be cut from 100% to 0%. They don't have to pay them. Some some companies actually allow people to work 100% from home. And when they need to have a meeting in person, they might go rent an office for an hour or two, have a meeting and then go back home. But most meetings now can be had online on Teams, on, 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 on Google Chat, on iCloud, on iMessage, all of that stuff. Costs because there would be no need to purchase expensive hardware, software licenses, and updates, IT technicians to maintain the system. They do not need to buy expensive hardware. I can use my, my 100 pound phone to access files on the cloud and to upload files, to edit files. I don't need to purchase software license. Most mobiles come with the app to access uh, the cloud services. And if I need to access, let's say OneDrive is a system they're using, all I'll need to access OneDrive online is an internet connection and a web browser, and that's it. So no software is need to be purchased. 
Uh, updates, I don't care about updates. Microsoft does all the updates. If something doesn't work, I call them, I complain, I contact them, they will fix it. It has nothing to do with me. IT technicians to maintain the system. If it were a, a, um, a local file server in a room somewhere, you would have to have an IT person who knows about networking, who knows about switches and how to connect stuff and how to configure stuff. Whereas with this, that's all Microsoft's problem. I'm paying them my for a company maybe my 200 pounds a month. I don't care what you have to do. I want it working. That's it. Scalable storage to suit needs. That's very true as well. Scalable simply means that it grows as and when needed. Let's say on Monday, we're working on a very tiny project as a, as a team of programmers, right? Somebody wants us to create an Android app, not particularly large, maybe let's say 500 megabytes to a gigabyte app max. But then the following week, someone says, we want you to create a brand new game in Unreal Engine 5. So it needs to be Gears of War or a brand new GTA San Andreas, whatever the game is. I don't care what the game is. That's going to be potentially hundreds of gigabytes. So we went, we, we, we went from one gigabyte to maybe 100 gigabytes straight away. Now, if this were to be in a local storage, we would have to buy multiple hard drives to do this. With cloud storage, I simply contact Microsoft. I don't even have to contact them, actually. I go on the website, I'll sign into my account, my OneDrive account, and I simply say, okay, I want to go from, I think they give you five gigabytes, something like that. I want to go from five gigabytes to 100 gigabytes. I pay the money and it's done. It's activated. I don't need to do anything else. So that's what it means to be scalable. As and when I need it, I can get more quickly, relatively quickly. I mean, with, within 30 seconds, I can log in and pay for the extra and move on. Okay, now we have the negative impacts. So it says increased reliance on the internet. What this means, you depend on the internet a lot. So when the internet goes down, because you've backed up everything on OneDrive or Google Drive, whatever service they're using, when the internet goes down, if and when it goes down, you're stuck. There's nothing you can do. You simply have to wait for it to come back online. This is something I myself am guilty of. I, I, I put everything on OneDrive. I don't like working offline whatsoever because that means I have to keep emailing and making sure I'm on the right laptop and making sure I'm on the right PC. Whereas with OneDrive, once I log in, it's all there. But if I don't have the internet, I am going to cry. Increased security risk. Transmission of data via the internet makes it more vulnerable to attack, hacking, stroke viruses. Once you connect to the internet, you are always more susceptible to getting viruses than when you are not connected because there are people out there always trying to hack into stuff, always trying to break stuff, always trying to do nefarious or bad things. Introduction of a third party may potentially increase risks. Microsoft can decide tomorrow that the free tier or the cheapest version of their cloud storage does not or does not need, um, shouldn't get their good antivirus, let's say, and they remove it overnight. And overnight, what could happen is someone could hack into your section of OneDrive or your drive and steal all your files. You may need to train staff in new working practice examples, saving stroke sharing data. Yes and no. Um, more so no, because most of the online cloud services I've seen nowadays, they sync automatically. But yes, this is something that could have been true maybe a few years ago. New threats to data security and how to avoid them. So you have to teach people on what they should do, what they should not do essentially when um, using cloud or using online system. But again, these are programmers. These are very skilled IT people. These are things that I'm sure they know, but in generally speaking, this is very true. So next we have cost. Paying for cloud storage, you have to constantly be paying for it. You can never stop paying for it. You might have a five-year subscription. You might pay one big lump sum up front and never have to pay again for five years. However, you have paid for five years. User support and in, uh, user support initial and ongoing you have to pay for user support as well you can't just drop down to like the free tier and then call them and say oh this isn't working they'll tell you okay you're a free customer or a, free, a person using our services for free we actually don't offer help to you so if, if you lose something or something goes bad there's no help for you and i've said training again because most likely the company will have to pay to train people on how to use the newer systems and that's it hopefully that was helpful uh, stay tuned for the next one